It was unreal, grotesquely unreal, that morning skies which dawned so tenderly blue could be profaned with cannon smoke that hung over the town like low thunderclouds, that warm noontides filled with the piercing sweetness of massed honeysuckle and climbing roses could be so fearful as shells screamed into the streets, bursting like the crack of doom, throwing iron splinters hundreds of yards, blowing people and animals to bits. Margaret Mitchell, Gone with the Wind. Welcome back to miniseries part three of Gettysburg. This is your hostess with the mostest and the most fabulous, most amazing, most fantastic person in the whole world. Shanana. Yeah, I feel very prepared for this episode. I bought Hunt for the Skinwalker and I've been reading it quite. Oh, hmm. boy. No. Does he have a name? That's PJ. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, I am your ghostess with the most. How's that? Oh. <laughs> so I'm Laura. And I'm Ray. I'm here to have a ghoul time. Oh. <laughs> a ghoul. <laughs> all right. All right. We are all. Oh, this is good. <laughs> We're on tonight. I like yep, this. Yep. All right. Well, welcome back to this part three. Very exciting. Today we are going to go into all the kind of interesting places in the town proper. So we got the Gettysburg Hotel, we've got the Orphanage, and we have Gettysburg College, which also comes with a side interview of Laura's friend Amanda. Yes, indeed. She is quite lovely. Excellent she is. job on Friends. I, mm. I like her. I keep her around. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> she lives close by. We'll invite her over to our creepy basement. Anyway, hi, all of your, hi everyone. And what, I said that wrong. Hi, everyone. <laughs> what Howdy. did you even say the first time? Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> sure, look at to be here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, I didn't know what that was either. I was like, holla. Holla. <laughs> A, a swell, a swell band here. We should get old. The most here. basic oh po- podcast. <laughs> Stop. All right, anyway. Oh, my God. That'll be our cult opening. Right, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There it is. <laughs> All right. So PJ mentioned he was doing the Skinwalker Ranch stuff. We had hyped up last week we were going to be on Liminal Unlimited, but due to constraints and the inability for us to actually connect, we are uh, recording that tomorrow night. I It's a joke's on them because I was able to get even more research <laughs> for <laughs> tomorrow. And so on their current week's podcast, they actually gave a shout out to, to PJ and me. And Kyle's like, um, Shanna's done a lot of research. It might be a two-parter. Well, joke's on you, Kyle, because probably going to be three now. Like, and as PJ said, he bought a book and he's reading a book. So we, we are ready. I haven't bought a nonfiction book since like college when I was forced to buy a nonfiction book, probably. <laughs> Does this count as nonfiction, though? Some people would say it's not. Oh, yeah. That, it's, 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 that, it's that's, that, that's fiction. Yeah, it's that gray area, you mm. know? It depends if you believe or not. Well, I think it's nonfiction because the person who wrote it was just doing research and they took all the research and put it down. So, therefore, it's nonfiction exactly. regardless if it's true or not. Okay, well, I, think that's well I, mean, I mean, they say that the guy who did. Bowling for Columbine and uh, Michael Moore. Michael Moore. They say his stuff is is factual, so you know. Bowling for Col- Columbine was. It. it has a slant. That one was pretty factual, but the other one that he did. It has was a slant. Not. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it's a. I, th- I guess that's a different to- or the topic Al Gore for a different podcast. But yeah. yeah, the Al Gore documentary. <laughs> like there are countries that like are not allowed to teach it in classrooms. Hmm, really? Yeah. Interesting. Well, Al Gore is proven right. Fun fact. All right. So, <laughs> and, Actually, we discussed that in my one graduate course. It was Ooh. kind of crazy. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you guys, by you guys, I mean Laura and Ray, decided you're going to do the Gettysburg Hotel together. So you guys got some lots of research over there. So why don't you just take it away, Let's paint do a it. picture with your words. Let's just dive right in. All right. Do you want to start with start? some of the history, Ray? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> so it's still located in what is now Lincoln's. I can't imagine why the building would say would it move. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. yes. So, so wait, it's it in was Gettysburg. And presently is by oh now my. I, 
actually don't know if it was called Lincoln Square at the time because it was 1797 when it was built. <laughs> it so probably, probably wasn't. Not. <laughs> they just knew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had a premonition. And if you remember from the last podcast, there is a Jenny Wade, Jenny Wade, a uh, tie into the Gettysburg Hotel because ultimately there's a tie into the orphanage too. Fun fact. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because well, after not ultimately, but after 1797, about ten years, a little over ten years later, it was purchased by um, William McClellan. And oh you remember his, yeah. Mm-hmm. The connection Jenny's, there. Yeah, yeah. Jenny's sister is Georgia McClellan. Oh. All right, and. Mr. McClellan was a former New York County sheriff. He actually named it the Indian Queen. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the McClellans were it's actually kind of mean pretty... considering everyone killed the Native Americans. You'd be called the Indian. Look, Queen. Look, I'm just reading what I. I found. know. I just like. Oh, it's interesting. Uh huh. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting. It does make you feel better that you killed but, off all the Native Americans and well, you named I mean, it after them. But nobody is this called it that. Apparently, apparently they just called it the McClellan House after the owners. So, of course. Okay. Yeah. Right. At least after 1846 yes. or so. That's Maybe what they just makes thought sense. It was more That's how all the locals knew it. Appro- yeah. Appropriate. Appropriate. Yeah. 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 yeah they, see, they were being politically correct even then. Their land. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, uh, you can also say they're probably being racist, you know. Anyway. <laughs> so during the summer of 1863, something happened, apparently. You know, something major might have happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The war was heating up, actually. It was escalating, but it was pretty hot. It was also, yeah, quite... Mm-hmm. Well, the hotel bore witness to much bloodshed, spoiler alert, um, just a few blocks from its front doors. It, And fun fact, Abraham Lincoln is even said to finish the Gettysburg Address directly across the street at the famed Willis House. Oh, okay. So there's a lot that actually happened in the vicinity yeah. of the Gettysburg well, Hotel. And I think given the fact it was, you know, on a main town square, you know, because it started out life as a tavern and it kind of became this, this inn and... Um, uh, you know, so I think um, that it, it was probably just a, v- a very important local place yeah. in general mm-hmm. and, and good, you know, just location, location, location. Well, it's kind of like Millville. It's a small town. Right. Was. Right. So right. if you're in the corner, you're like around everybody. <laughs> True. But actually, well, it's at the intersection of nice location and decent technology. We're making, you know, a couple of comments about how much fun it would have been if you're a ghost. I use that term loosely, if you're a ghost and faced with modern day technology. In the 1890s, the hotel underwent a renovation. And at that time, that's when it formally became the Gettysburg Hotel. Mm. Um, But when we say ahead of its time, electric lights. Indoor plumbing. Indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. Not only indoor plumbing, but you had your selection of hot or cold water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big news. Yes. And, and it was full functioning. Yep. It had a restaurant in the building, too. Yeah. I don't know about the room service, but the restaurant was definitely a thing. That's true. Yeah, I don't care. So, yeah. The so hot <laughs> bath. I've been like, I'm in. <laughs> Sold. I'll and, walk down and get my own food from the kitchen. I'm good. <laughs> and nowadays, I didn't actually realize how large it was, but it has 119 rooms to choose from. Mm-hmm. There's actually wow. 9,000 square feet of meeting space in the Gettysburg Hotel. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea it was that big. Have you been there before? No, I haven't. No, we'll have okay. to at least go to the restaurant when we're yeah. there next. I have to bring so much money and I'm going to gain so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just preparing. Okay. Now, as you might expect, bring my fat pants, Got for it. A, um, uh, a hotel of this age and location and stature, it does have some permanent guests. Of course. You know. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, no, that he specifically has not been mentioned. There Culture are some cat. unknown men, so it's possible. But no polter no cats. No, that, yeah, that's a cat. rarity. It is. You yes. know, most of the cats are like hiding, apparently. Yeah, well. <laughs> all right. So tell me all about it, stud. All right. So um, the again, like so many buildings, you know, in the Civil War in Gettysburg, uh, as in the heat of battle, injured soldiers were brought to the building to be treated. Uh, doctors and nurses cared for thousands of injured and dying men at thousands. the hotel. That's what Oof. it says. Yes. Wow. Many of them succumbing to their wounds mm-hmm. within. I mean, but if you're thinking this, that kind of square footage. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it had. Packed in like time, sardines, I'm but sure. It was yeah. still probably, yeah, big. Um, so, yeah, there there was there were a lot of a lot of people who went through and a lot of people who did not come out alive from there. Yeah. So the most famous ghost is known as Rachel. 
And a female. A female, yes. My, my. And so many, many, many guests have reported seeing a slim woman walking the halls of the hotel, seemingly in search of something or someone. So Rachel is uh, believed to have been a nurse during the Civil War. And what she's most known for, there's one room in particular that she really hangs out in, but she's been seen in other locations in the hotel and even walking down the street. But she's most known to rummage through guests' belongings, <laughs> <laughs> taking things out of suitcases, opening drawers, leaving them open, that kind of thing. And so, you know, people aren't sure. Is she, you know, as a nurse, is she looking for bandages? Say, she's probably looking for bandages. That's, you know, it was so common. They were right. looking for anything they could yeah. cover. Right. So. Or is she just rummaging? A busy yeah. Body. yeah. Who, what we don't know. <laughs> So um, there, a lot of the guests also just in general report an eerie, eerie feeling of being watched, especially in I Rachel's room. Not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. That's there like, was... I want to get changed, but I cannot get changed <laughs> because someone's watching me. Oh, there was one girl creepy that I ghost. saw. That's really a creepy ghost. Yeah, that's like voyeurism, <laughs> but like messed up voyeurism. Well, and then you know, I think in a location like this too, like your mind is already like on high alert. Like there yeah. was one one girl who who did a, a video on her stay in Rachel's room and really nothing terribly exciting or creepy happened to her but you know she she talked about how the the bathtub had this white curtain (laughs) (laughs) she was like it just looks like a woman in white you know Mm -hmm. and it just was freaking her out already and you're already in that suggestive phase right I wonder if there are any employee accounts there was one employee account that I came across on YouTube as well um, and uh, and he's worked there for many, many years. And he talked about how it was the end of an event. It was like one o'clock in the morning. He went down in the basement to put stuff away. And he kind of, he, as he's leaving, he, he hears this noise. So he stops and turns around. And one of those big rolly carts is just traveling after <laughs> him. <laughs> you forgot this. <laughs> and he said it went like 10 or 12 feet. And then it just stopped and turned around it's like the balloons following them, like, you know, creepy nursing homes and stuff. That's like one of the things I really wanted to, just because it makes more sense. I think it would be so cool to have employee, yeah, employee accounts. Yeah. I think just it adds a validity. Well, it adds validity. They're there more than guests, for mm-hmm. sure. Yep. Yeah. And you that know. that same employee also told the story of one guest, again, in, in what's known as Rachel's room, that he uh, reported feeling pressure on his chest as though someone were holding him down. We need to chop off your leg, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he said he was unable to get up at first, and then <gasps> it, he's, then he was, but that would be terrifying. Rachel, I do not consent. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Rachel. Uh, there are some other apparitions, right? So wanna, I'm sorry, I want to pop in really fast. Do you guys want to stay in Rachel's room? Yes. Um, no. I would. <laughs> no, you can stay in Rachel's PJ, room. PJ, how about you? Sure. No, no, we did the 1790. Well, you know it's your turn to I, have honestly, the creepy, creepy like, stories. If, if it were a situation where we could all, like, slumber party it oh, in yeah. Rachel's room, <laughs> yeah. I'd feel a little bit better. I wonder if we pay them money. We can be like, we do Valhaus exercises. Can we have some really well rolly known. beds, you know? Or... <laughs> Let's see if it moves. What do you call them? The rolly beds? Carts. The trundle beds. Yeah. The trundle beds? Mm-hmm. We can also, like, the order of trundle beds or cots. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. A mattress, beds. a portable mat. No, that sounds silly. Air mattress. Yeah, an air mattress or something like that. I'll, I'll sleep on the floor. It's like, okay. I don't even mind. There's no monsters under <laughs> like, the bed honestly, if you're on the floor. I'm okay with, like, strength in numbers, right? Like, having people there. <laughs> Every you know. scary movie has proven that to be a lie, though, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah, All right. So what idea. else do we have? So we don't want Rachel to watch We us. have a couple of dancers. <gasps> yes. Oh, that's a guy a and a girl. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what happens? Well, they would dance in the hotel ballroom. I believe one of them is a soldier and the other one is not. Aww. <laughs> well, is it a female? Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. <laughs> it's not two male soldiers dancing. Mm-hmm. They listen to each Nobody their own. knows really like who they are, what their identities are, but. That's so beautiful, can though. Can you imagine, though? Aww. Like, yeah. Spending, you know. Eternity. Mm. Like, happy. Well, life after death, so mm. to speak. Yeah. What a happy little thing. PJ, I'll dance with you. Yeah. After you. death. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be no. here. I'm going to leave. But if you want to. <laughs> She's literally choreographed your afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> so she, ha- she has that all researched and planned out. She's literally one step ahead of you. <laughs> it's just a jump to the left and then a, a step to the right. A hop to the left. And we're going to do a jump. Oh. <laughs> 
a hop a hop to the left? It's not a hop to the left. What is he? It's just a jump to the left. Oh, jump to the left. I say, why? This is why you and I get along so much, Ray, because this is what I deal with. Actually, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind being haunted by like a whole like group of people doing the time warp. Like as long as you're not singing twenty four seven though, because no. like you get you'd tired get after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. um, new song. Yeah. It's a jump to the left. I get <laughs> it. I get it. Yes, I was wrong one time. I- I've seen Banana Phone. I know how this ends. <laughs> <laughs> It right, would so be the- astounding. <laughs> you think yourself time is fleeting. And madness does take well, your soul. Well, not for this couple. <laughs> All right, so we have dancers. What else? Yes, we do. That is pretty much like the exciting world of... Um, of the Gettysburg Hotel, it has all the classic other things too: the lights flickering, mm-hmm. the you know the faucets, that kind of thing. But yeah, those are the main apparitions. Some situations with like scents, cigar smoke. Is oh that yes, thing? yeah, awesome. the cigar mm-hmm. smoke is a big one. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, you're right. No stinky human smells and decaying <laughs> smells. <laughs> no, well, I know. And uh, Amanda did mention that. Oof, mm-hmm. that would be. Ugh. No, thank you. No. Well, the fun fact is this an actual would... fun fact because. We use the word fun incorrectly a lot well, on this podcast. <laughs> Interesting fact. Okay. Yeah, we should, we, got, we, got probably... the, we got to work on better adjectives, I think. Yeah, as I know. A More accurate. Yeah. Interesting <laughs> fact. Um, the Gettysburg Hotel actually suffered a significant amount of damage, fire damage, oh. in the 80s. What happened? Um, I actually don't know if it was an electrical fire or... Um, Hopefully it wasn't like a cigar and stuff. Maybe forgot to like put out. I'm not entirely sure. But Ghost is trying to get out of there. I knew it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> if I burn the place down, Sick I'll be free. Sick watching these people dance in the time mm-hmm. warp. I'm done. But like it did. And um, it sustained a significant amount of fire damage. It was actually abandoned as a result of it. And was not rebuilt or remodeled until the early 90s. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking probably close to 10 years before. A decade before. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Hmm. And so since they were built, they, they still have the same ghosts? Apparently. Rachel didn't. Rachel's like, you build my house. I She's like, I'm back. renovated now. I'm not. Now I'm really staying. <laughs> I'm new and improved. <laughs> Well, I think like if, if she's ruffling through all of your stuff to see like what's in there, mm-hmm. imagine just the change in makeup. What does this thing do? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. <gasps> Deodorant? What? <laughs> this could stop smells? Like, again, I, I think as a ghost. What are all be... of these hussies wearing? <laughs> <laughs> what is this brazier? How dare they? What is this underwear? My Honestly, my. where are their petticoats? Like, all things considered, your imagination could run wild. I mean, in terms of like you could, what could be in a suitcase. So, oh, that's true. Yeah, it's like Little Mermaid though, like in the the sunken ships. Like, oh look, a fork. I'm gonna use this as a hairbrush. Like that's. I feel like that's Rachel. Like, oh, what does this well, thing everything, do? Everything like from like an eye, like a what do you call it? The thing with the curling eye. Curl- oh, curling eye. Yeah. Yes. Well, they had those back then. Really? Much more unsafe. Yeah, they would put them like I, I in a fire. Like, yeah. They put them by the fire, and then they would quickly curl their hair on there. A lot of burnt hair. Oh my gosh! You didn't know that. Well, Even of course, back then see, girls did crazy things to look d- beautiful. You're, you're a dude. You don't understand. Like PJ calls my eyelash curler. Uh, what do you call it? Torture device. A torture device. I'm like, well, honey, it's been around for a while. But he's right. Like it looks like it could be a torture mm-hmm. device. But it's, it's true. Yeah. But even just looking at the shoes. Oh yeah. Well, men wore heels back then too. So. Yeah, but not like four inch ones. Some of them ones, did, really, because they were so short. Yeah. Shoot, maybe I should get avoid a pair the poop heels. in the streets too. Yeah, mm. I did not know that. I didn't know that was, was more that. like an England thing. Yeah, London thing. But even in Gettysburg, dudes were. Th- I don't know about heels. America. They were they wore but... heels. It was the fashion of the time period. Well, yeah, for like fancy dress parties and stuff. There like was that. poop in the streets here too. Let's well, be honest. yeah, <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any major city would have it. I like to imagine like you wearing you guys wearing heels. I couldn't imagine it. Like, although I've thought of. It would be cool to be like three inches taller. <laughs> <laughs> As we go out and get Ray's so very first pair of stilettos. Me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Peach like, my calves just look so good in these. <laughs> I'm not taking these off now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, right, getting back to your thought, I think that you're very right. You know, one of the things that has always stuck with me is, and this is not Gettysburg related, but, um, I, you know, I grew up reading Little House on the Prairie mm-hmm. and all the books. Uh, but Laura Ingalls Wilder, she was born in 1867. And if you've read the books, like, spoiler alert, like, her, she and her family, like, go out west in a 
a covered wagon yep. pulled by oxen. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's like the, mm-hmm. the traditional pioneer story. But by the time she died, it was 1957. Elvis was a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the thing she saw just in her lifetime. Imagine she if she two world oh, the, wars. yeah both world yeah. wars. The technology yes. boom that happened in the past hundred yes. years has been so, insane. Mm-hmm. But that's sort of my point. Like if 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 I'm a ghost and I've like gone out west being pulled in a cover uh, you know covered wagon and now like as you're saying like there's electricity and indoor <laughs> plumbing and there's elvis and rock and roll and all of those like things i'm turning the stereo back on <laughs> click click i want to hear nirvana this is awesome <laughs> yes so anyway i just think that that's like really really cool yeah well and i always love putting that in context to my students too because you know while you have the war happening proper in the, in the 60s you also have manifest destiny still happening in the latter half of America. It's crazy to think that you have these covered wagons and you have us still fighting the Cherokee and whatever else, you know, out and out and everywhere on the boonies. It makes no sense to me that Kansas chose to become a state while While we were in the midst of the Civil War. Well, yeah. What? And there was fighting happening there. Like, you know, because they were all Americans, you know, living there. But it's like, why on earth would you even enter in at that point? Like, wouldn't you just wait and be like, I'm going to wait to see how this turns out. see who wins first. And then first, and I'll then decide I'll... north or south that I'm joining, or maybe it's just the union or whatever. But yeah. Although Canada, so might, I mean, not Canada, but Kansas might be used to its share of turmoil. I mean, tornadoes and Oh, that's stuff, true. So we need help. Why not? <laughs> you want to hear a fun honestly, fact? If you think about oh, it's it. really yeah. fun. <laughs> Interesting. We'll find out. <laughs> Is it or isn't it? After the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln unifying the North and the South and all that, we went from calling ourselves like saying the the, Amer- uh, the United States are to the United States is. It's like the United States is a country where the United States are a country. Because we became one unit. Exactly. Right? That is a fun fact. That is. It's a grammatical fact, too, so I appreciate it. <laughs> and it's symbolic. Well, because before we were kind of – we were a collection of states. We were a literal United States. Right. We were just – all these different states, we all had our own rules, but we were just working together as one unit. Mm-hmm. All right. I wish is that we all got that in a southern accent. <laughs> Why could we I, unified in that? I'm fine without it. I, don't I feel like I would talk slower ha- if I had that. It accent. depends on like the southern accent you are saying you yes. using. Fine. Mm. Fine. It's beautiful. But the the guy from Skinwalker Ranch, <laughs> oh, Taylor. Alabama. Uh, yeah, the the Alabama twang. You know. <laughs> oh, my, what was that? Failing. Open the sky there. <laughs> He's like the smartest guy in the world, and like it's hard to take him serious at I, all. I always you say, know? like I think he's he's amazing. Like to hear his backstory, he it obviously is gifted. Very, I mean, he must be a genius level like you. But he's well, geez, look at that. <laughs> And so I believe, if I remember it, that what I researched um, correctly, his brother actually like dropped out of schooling to ha- to work to pay for his schooling, pay for Taylor's schooling. Aww. And he has like multiple degrees. He has like two or three PhDs. He works for NASA. He's bu- he builds rockets. Like he is a rocket scientist. He is incredibly intelligent. He's a rocket surgeon? Surgeon, yes. Those are Ooh, called flight oh, wow. surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> but you listen to him talk and you're like, there is no way that Albert, our Albert Einstein of our generation sounds like that. I'm sorry. It's not allowed. It is not. Allowed. And his hair. For our Southern too. listeners, awesome. though, like, we appreciate you very much. And everything. Oh, you know, like, what you're saying now. But yeah, the accent is just I for it's us adorable. up in the north. I think it's it's adorable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have fun with it. Although probably they're listening to you talk and be like, that's not how we sound at all. No, <laughs> well, I know a couple of people's accent. They would be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like Jared. Jared. Jared Tyler, he, 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 listening. He'd be Taters. like, I, I'm pretty sure he'd be like, yep. yep. <laughs> His nickname was Taters because of the way he said Taters. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, and like I have a weird accent too because I'm actually from New England, so I overcompensate and try to overpronounce my R's because I, it's not I'm not used to saying R's. Like when I'm tired, like right now, we always record in the evenings. I'm half asleep, so I know that if I don't overpronunciate, I'm gonna drop my post vocalic R's. It's You're just gonna, gonna pack happen. the car. Outside. I'm gonna pack the car. Yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun when British people do American accents. Like, do they do it better than we do? Mm-hmm. It's. So you can tell, yeah. Sometimes, like, yeah. You know that it's not their actual accent. And every once in a while, a word will slip. I remember, yeah. yeah. 
Watch the first season of House. You can hear him make <laughs> yeah. mistakes. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. But Or um, to... Peter the... Dinklage in Game of Thrones oh, season one. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. It's yeah. real rough. He watched the well, first season of Eli Stone yeah. even. Well, that's the reverse, though. It's an American, American being Trying to do a British. That's yep. true, mm-hmm. yeah. Or or then like the Doctor oh. Strange, the first Doctor Strange oh, yes, movie. Yes, that is it's it's strange. It's very strange. It's just strange. He got better, but it's oh, just yeah. so like over a lot. It's not every situation, but sometimes it can be so over enunciated. It's like that is not how we talk. <laughs> <laughs> Monty Python does that a lot. They'll overdo the accent. Oh, for... what's his name in Blackbird on Apple TV? We're doing a lot of shout outs oh, right now. Yeah, Taron. Edgerton. Yeah. Edgerton. Oh, yeah. he's yes. great. Yeah, he's great. But his accent, it was, well, he, he had to do like a New York accent, even though the guy's from Ooh. Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, sometimes, yeah. okay, you're American. <laughs> Bob, Os- Bob Hoskins, that was the only American accent he could do. That's why Who Framed Roger <laughs> yeah. Rabbit, he, he has he the talks, accent. Yeah, that New oh, York that's accent. great. I yeah, that. I mean, I hear a lot of English, well, you know, they'd be like, hey guys, let's go to France. <laughs> you know, like, that's how it sounds to me. <laughs> Oh, anyway, I love all We've southern gotten... accents. Just saying. In- back to back to that. I love yeah. a southern accent. And incidentally, a lot of English folks say that it's easier to slip into a southern accent than like a straight up. Because you're still dropping that post vocal yeah. R. Well, mm-hmm. and I yeah, I think that that would but, have been the the more original American accent as a whole coming from England. I would England. say the New England accent probably. I've heard it was the southern, but I could be totally wrong. We'll have to go back Wait, and, and we need check research. Out. Yes. Yay, research. Because, you know, I actually was going to go for a degree in that. And then I decided not to because the professor at Bloomsburg University is like, don't because there is no future in linguistics or semantics mm. because we're becoming like a melting hodgepodge. Like the accent. Unless you go into the CIA. <laughs> or True. if the arrival True. ever happens. The arrival. Do you ever see that movie? Mm. That's oh, another boy. shout out. Oh, boy. I'm scared. Anyway, let's go ahead and move into the children's orphanage then, because mine has a sad backstory. Well, a happy backstory, sad backstory, happy time, then sad time. So it kind of goes back and forth. It's wishy washy. It's fun. Are you ready to go on Quite a, an emotional a ride? Roller coaster. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. You ready for this? Take us away. Yes. All right. Fasten your seatbelt. Yeah. Fasten your seatbelt. Is, is this the uphill moment right now? Uh, <laughs> so um, it's called the Children's Orphanage. Um, if when you go to research it, like especially on the Civil War ghosts. So um, my two major articles are going to be from Civil War Ghosts, but also the National Soldiers Orphans Homestead by Cole Wanner. Yeah, that's the actual title. So it's actually called the Orphans Homestead as well. So let me paint a picture for you from Cole Wanner because he wrote this um, as part of his Ph.D. On July 1st, 1863, the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg, Sergeant Amos Hummingston of the 154th New York Infantry was covering the retreat of Union soldiers to Cemetery Hill. Positioned behind a picket fence and brickyard, Amos and the rest of the 154th New York were attacked by two Confederate brigades. Amos was able to slip out of the Confederate's grip and desperately ran toward Cemetery Hill, but was mortally wounded. In his dying moments, Amos retrieved a photo of his three children from his pocket. He may have thought about his last note home. He had written, How I want to see them and their mother is more than I can tell. I hope that we may all live to see each other again. When Amos's body was found by Benjamin Shriver's daughter, shout out to the Shriver farm, she found that he was holding an embryo type sent by his wife, Felinda, in June, but not his name. Dr. John Borns from Philadelphia, who stopped at the Shriver's Tavern on his way to Gettysburg as a volunteer physician, went back for the embryo type and published the picture in a number of northern newspapers. He had been touched by this dead, unknown father. He wanted to find the family and the name of this dead Union soldier. By October 1863, the heart-wrenching news that Amos was dead reached the Hummingston family. By selling copies of the photograph of the Hummingston children, Bourne was able to start a fund to support the Hummingston children and other orphaned children of the Union Army. Then he established an orphanage for these children in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. 
Mm-hmm. So the happy, I mean, it's sad, but beautiful. You have this background where Amos is morally when he crawls away to die. Again, a very common theme mm-hmm. we've seen these different yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. And the last thing he looks at is a picture he has of his three children, which is so beautiful, but also so sad. And like as we were talking before, they didn't have their names. Some of them had their names pinned them, but there wasn't like dog tags back then. Right. So it was only because one of the Shriver's picked up his picture and took it to their tavern. And then a random doctor slash field surgeon goes, my gosh, I'm so touched by the story. I'm going to publish this picture in every newspaper. So he's going to pay the money for that. And I'm going to find this family. It's only because of the beauty and the the, the do goodedness, if you will, of these people that he was, ever, he, his family ever was found. And of course the orphanage even came to like be. And so what's actually really cool from a different article, it was learned too, that Amos was known as a noble, generous, and cheerful. He was always quick to do any duty he was given, but above all, they said he was very much a devoted father mm-hmm. and, and husband. So you think that's this man, like to put a face again, behind, like, like uh, Ray did last week, to put it, that kind of, face behind the name like you get the idea of what a wonderful person he was and so what comes out of this initially is such a beautiful idea so what happens is you have dr john borns who then has this funding to start looking for a way to help all the orphans because as we mentioned lots of people died (laughs) because of the civil war um not many civilians but we lost so many men that it was hard to repopulate and women then have to take care of children but they can't get jobs there were so many orphans that came from this time period and so it's just a common theme what do women do with their kids you know are they going to leave them and run away sadly that was something that happened pretty often you know or did the woman die too Hmm. then what happens to the kids if you look at um, Edgar Allan Poe's past, he was a part of the orphan train, as were his siblings. They were all split apart. It was that time period, you know, where there literally were orphan trains and you would hop on a train and you would go out and help with Manifest Destiny. Oh, you need a kid for your farm? Here, take this one off the train. Literally. Look at yep. Anne of Green Gables for crying out loud yeah. in heaven everywhere. Yep. So Dr. John Bournes wanted to find a way to kind of give these kids a second chance at life in a loving kind of way. So um, in eighteen six, so after the war, eighteen sixty six, he was looking for a property, and he got one on Baltimore Street in Gettysburg. I'm a little confused as to why he would buy property in the place where Amos, you know, died. But the reasoning was the brick building he wanted to buy was actually used um, during the Battle of Gettysburg by Major General Oliver Howard, which was the commanding officer of the 11th Corps, which is um, where Amos was was worth a part of. So it's kind of like in connection to that. And as a connection to last week, it is literally right across the street from the Jenny Wade house. So when wow. you yeah you know, when you do a tour of this place you also hop across the street and do a tour of Jenny Whaley. it's part of the a tour circuit so little connection there yes. all right um, but anyway currently the building is part of the Civil War tales because uh, this building has been like through a lot of changes because again it was an orphanage and it was lovely at first then it wasn't mm. and then bad you know so it kind of mm. goes back and forth. So anyway, uh, November 20th, and we're going to flash forward in 1866, once he ends up um, buying this place, he opens it as the National Soldiers Orphans Homestead, which is a mouthful. So it was just called the Children's Orphanage because it's just a lot easier. But here's a beautiful side fact, too. Felinda and her three children, Frank, Fred, and Alice, who were in the picture... They actually moved to the homestead, and Felinda became the first matron of the orphanage. Aww. So she ended up getting a full-time job huh. where she could care for her own children and other children who were orphaned by the war. Isn't that beautiful, that is guys? so nice. But alas. Anyway, so while she's in charge, the orphanage is what you imagine it should be. It's beautiful. The kids are involved in so much. I mean, they were always present in the community events. They were a part of the Memorial Day celebrations where they actually would walk flowers to the National Cemetery and put flowers in the graves of those who died. No surprise, Frank and Fred and Alice put flowers in their dad's grave there. Mm. So absolutely beautiful. Hmm. Three years later, Felinda remarried. Again, not uncommon to have widows, you know, marry. Uh And so she moves to Beckett, Massachusetts then because she's married. Uh, She takes Alice and Fred uh, because they're still young. Frank stayed there because he wanted to study for admittance to college. Okay, side note. Um, But so since she leaves, they need a new matron. 
That's when Dr. Bournes fills the position with a woman named Rosa Carmichael. And this is when everything goes horribly awry. Oh, boy. So for three years, Um, it is a beautiful place full of happiness. And then Rosa takes over. Okay. Now, I do want to say, while it was a happy homestead, um, it was actually visited by Ulysses S. Grant, which is kind of cool. He, when he was president? Uh, yeah, because he wanted to draw up donations uh, for the campaign, but also mm. to support the orphanage. Mm, Isn't that cool? Very yeah. nice. Yep. But, um, again, we have this wicked woman take control. Um, when she takes over, the orphanage treats all these innocent orphans like dirt. It oh. is awful she went so far as to utilize the basement as her own personal dungeon for the children it's literally called a dungeon in like every article you read wow yes Uh, it was used to and i'm quoting from her discipline unruly children okay so that's every child what's the nature of the discipline does it say so it depends on what you believe because um Not so much can be found now, but according to stories, and I actually have right here the court quarter session where they actually find her. Yeah, look look at how old that puppy is right now. Okay. Um, So it is said she chained children down there. And second, you want to borrow it? Look it over, PJ. Go ahead. You'll be um, disgusted, so don't read anything off there too loudly because... You know, so reportedly she chained them to the walls down there. She forced them in corners and they were forced down there for hours. There are also stories that she trained other children who were good children to beat the wicked children. So she actually like allowed battery and assault and she trained others in the fine art of battery and assault. Yes. She had minions. Yep. And it's harrowing really to think of like what else probably happened down there if she just left kids in charge of kids. You've seen all the psychological, Mm -hmm. you know things that are done like what happens in a day when you're told you're better than someone else because of your eye color or whatever so anyway she took over in 1869 1873 she's still in charge four years later and that's when rumors really start to spread because you have these kids who are growing up to adulthood and they're leaving and they're saying guess what happened to me there and so they're finally getting the words out there nobody wants to believe it because you know well, out of sight, out of mind, that whole idea again. Well, and raising kids was so different. I mean, there was a um, – what's that saying? Spare the rod, spoil, spoil the, the child. child. Yeah. You know, it was it – was, I mean, discipline was brutal in yep. most cases at that time. So in 1873, though, those rumors start circulating, right? Because people have grown up now and they're telling you stories and people don't want to believe it because spare the rod. Well, and there's a difference, though, between like – you know, spanking a kid and discipline, even like harsh discipline, which would have been more true of the area, like pick your own switch kind of a thing, yeah. as opposed to chaining kids up and having other kids beat them or Being starving them or whatever. Or yes. Days. Yeah. It wasn't until 1876, three years later, <sighs> that they actually started investigating because the children's were absent from the Memorial Day parade. They did not bring any flowers to the graves. Which was, again, they were always busy. They're always a part of these community events. They weren't there. Hmm. And so when they weren't there, that's when people then finally started to do a little bit of investigation. Now, Rosa was arrested and she was charged with cruelty to an orphan. That's literally what it says. She was convicted of aggravated. (laughs) Yeah, just one, apparently. Yeah. She was convicted of aggravated assault and she was fined $20. And the court finds. Mm. Yes. She was told to leave Gettysburg. But for some reason, she returned to the orphanage and she continues to be in charge of it. Where's this doctor guy? Ah, That's a good question. In the actual no. heck. Yep. So um, in 1877, the story of her treatment is actually published in the, in the Philadelphia newspaper. And then it's reprinted in the Gettysburg Star and Sentinel. Then that December, the orphanage was closed. The children were removed and Rosa was then finally forced out of town. What I don't understand is how she was told to leave, but she went back and she was in charge of it for almost another year. Like, that disturbs me. Yeah. Because there were also, at that time, rumors that there were missing children who were never found. Oh, no. So, yeah, when they shut this place down, those kids were still not found. $20 back then would be about $501 today. Yes. And paying the court fines. No jail time. 
And you went back to your job because you're told to leave, but you didn't leave. So in any case, it got shut down, as we mentioned, right? And um, it honestly was kind of like empty for a while. Then it became a duplex in 1903. Then it became a bed and breakfast in 1915. And then recently it was converted, I believe, into a diorama museum. But that's where the Civil War Tales is in charge of it now. Um, So I just kind of, again, just horrifies me to think that she went back and continued her work it reminds me so much of you know talking about the harrisburg state hospital and of course oh, yeah, penhurst yeah. i yep. don't understand that but to go back to a happy thought because i you know as i put this here uh sideways because i wanted to like remove myself from the sad and just kind of go back to the happy for a little bit <laughs> um so when felinda was in charge of it she rocked it um they actually said that they provided a good home to the children they got a fine education and approximately 200 kids over the next decade. So for the next 10 years actually got a really fine education. So even though Rosa was a horrible human being um, for the next 10 ish years, they did receive a great education. Um, They were included in all their community events. A lot of them um, would, you know, go out to the community and then like be adopted, which was nice. So again, like that's the happy side. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that cellar. Okay, so if oh, you can we? yeah, because you you actually get to go visit it. You can actually walk down in there. There are pictures of it. I saw it's not online. It's pretty cool, but it's basically just this like deep hole. It's like an alcove in the cellar. It's it's this small little place, um, and it's really haunting because it's dark. It's stagnant. It's just all rock and rubble. You like you can imagine young kids being forced to sit there in the dark for hours or even days. Who knows? Like terrifying. Yeah. You can see where like the chains were anchored. Well, all I can tell you is like. I think of the pit in the pendulum, you know. like pit in the pendulum. Can you imagine pendulum. like went back when it was a duplex? Like, <laughs> T- Timmy, can you go, go, down, go down to the basement, please, and bring up the blah, blah, blah? No, thanks. <laughs> I don't want to. Hard pass. Hard pass. Yeah, so um, there's one person who actually went down there. So I thought I'd share his story. He says, when you go down there, you'll actually see toys kind of scattered throughout there because they have toys down there as like a like a little memory area for the children that have died there. But um, what's creepy is the guy who's in charge and talks, he's like, yeah, sometimes we'll just like find the toys in random places. And as they're there, they look over and there is one of the pink bears like over on a barrel. And he's like, yeah, that wasn't there um, half an hour ago. So, yeah, um, that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> he actually has a picture of, like, the pile of toys and then the one lone bear. So things actually do move, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but other stories, it says most stories consist of hearing the clanging of chains against the basement's walls, which you have to assume then that there were chains down there. You would, They're not there now, right. but, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, they also hear, like, the moans of children. Mm-hmm. So some visitors don't like um, going down there because they get to hear that. I mean, I got it. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to hear that. Like mm-hmm. I have three kids, right? Jeez. That'd be haunting. Yes. Really? Um, the most common though is a ghostly apparition of a small boy. He mm. seems to appear from the shadows in the basement. Um, he will come out of the corners, but then he like, disappears again really quickly. Um, people try to take a photograph and he's just like gone. Um, there's actually one story of people who were there talking and they took a picture and there is him in between them. And, of course, he wasn't there before or after, so they happen to get that picture just in time, you know, because he tends to run away and hide too quickly. Um, they do get other entities. Mostly it's just shadows, like shadowy figures. Um, so I think that's, like, kind of horrifying. So I think, like, there's, like, but all these kids. Like, it's just, like, there's in their story of, like, handfuls of photos of children being in the pictures. Um, they also capture, like, lots of orbs and flashes of light. But um, I think the biggest thing you hear are these moans and these cries of terror from the children. And it just kind of, again, it breaks my heart to think, like, these poor kids, like, they haven't gone on. Or it's that residual. I, like, yeah, the residual. Know, that, yeah. You put that, like, energy in there. And so I would I would let, prefer to hear, like, little four, like, four-year-old like foot tapping along and giggling. And like playing that I made organ that I mentioned. music. Yeah. yeah. I'd prefer that to think of, like, the homes of that happier time. But... You know, you have that negative energy kind of imbued in the place. But I did like this quote from the Civil War Tales um, from their, they're the current owners of their website, because it just it echoes back to when we did the Harrisburg State Hospital, UME, PJ, and of course our Penhurst series. Unfortunately, the orphanage had not outlived the need for it. Children were still waiting to come in. The actions of one person and the failure of others to do anything about them had brought about the end of a good thing, proving that even well-founded, much-needed organizations with solid programs and noble visions can be destroyed if no one stands up to evil. 
So I just like that. I don't want to get preachy, preachy, but excellent job, Civil War Tales, because I agree with you. No, oh, that's well stated. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, that's so sad. Yeah. So it came after the so, but so it came after the war proper, but it was based on because of what happened to Amos. So again, I like that idea. Like it was in his honor, and Felinda got to be the matron at first. I thought it was like a cool like way to kind of bring in those women who really. What else were they going to do with their lives without their their husband? So right, so really happy. Just abused children. Well, you know <laughs> that grows. Yeah. Uh, my it's goodness. Like, or you go the other way. That's true. But you know, one of the things I was just I, I just looked it up to confirm. But when you were talking about the the number of people, I mean, this was like a, a tough time to generally be alive anyway. You know, mm-hmm. with disease and just you know mm-hmm. carriage accidents yeah. and all the things that would kill you and everything. Everything right. wanted to you kill know, you. Yeah. yeah. But the Civil War and the disease specifically related to the Civil War, I mean that that killed two percent of the population. Which I mean, that's over the course of the war. But if you can you imagine if two percent of the population died now? I they mean, made a TV show about that. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it one percent? No, it was two percent. What's two percent? Yeah, oh, the wow. leftovers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it was it was specifically it was 2%. Two, Oh, that's so funny. I didn't <laughs> I didn't realize that was a connection. Um, but I mean, but you know, just to your point, you know that there were people stepping up, you know, trying to do good things, mm-hmm. and then. Mm-hmm. You know, then the, there's the other half of human nature, which take advantage of. Yeah. But how how bad is your life that you got to, like, beat kids in the basement? Like, Can't you do something else with assistant. your life if yeah. you don't yeah. want to yeah. do it? Hobby. Right. Like, like, a major point, like, inferior or superior. The community loves complex. those kids. Send them out to do other jobs. Like, get them out in the community more. Have them do a knitting club or a quilting bee i don't know have them go cut wood like there is no reason yeah. to chain kids oh, in the basement i know but it's yeah. i'm preaching i'm preaching too much sorry well, no it's, it's it's just shocking and you know mm-hmm. it still happens that's the shocking yeah. thing it does yeah. it does all right so since that was so sad i think we need to do some levity by listening to our uh clip our favorite song yeah our favorite song <laughs> kyle <laughs> uh but we do have kyle's creepy thought for today so Let's go ahead and do that. I think one of the people. I thought it would be a good idea if we turned Shannon. I thought it would be. I thought it would be a good idea if we. I thought it would be a good idea. 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 I thought it would be a good idea if we turned Shannon. The girl from Ringu. This is bad. This is really bad. It's just gold. It's a Ouija. It's just gold. Every time I'm cracking up. All right, so he sent us his, and it's about the Dobbin House. And it's topical for. What we what talked about in yeah. the interview that's after this episode. It's going to lead right Coming into up. PJ, yeah. Strange thing that occurred to me when I thought about the phantom smells like uh, the smell of cigars at the Dobbin house. Um, we know from studies in neurology that memories tied to a large degree to the sense of smell. Grandma's cookies, fresh flowers on a first date, pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving, etc. There's also the theory that consciousness exists as a quantum field that survives us after death. It's tied to that other place. If the lingering quantum field of a deceased person's mind drives the haunting phenomena, what if the phantom smells that people sense aren't so much a function of paranormal activity what if it's that you literally, for a moment, walked through that person's memory? Ooh. Now that's creepy. Hmm. Oh, that'd be one way to maybe conjure it if you're a ghost. But... Does that make it less creepy? Kinda, Yeah. I like to imagine I mean, there's that's a ghost way to smoking think a it, cigar right? instead. Like, well, because I'm thinking, like, you know, you had the story recently of how you smelled. I was, I was yeah, just going to say this because I, I kind of disagree with it just because. All right. So after um, both my grandparents, my mom and pop-up had passed away, like growing up, they both had what I would call like a distinctive scent. You know, like pop-up was a smoker, mm-hmm. but he also smelled like 
bop up, you know? Like, it wasn't like yeah. any time I smell smoke, I, it makes me think of bop up. That's not true because he had a very distinctive bop up smell. And my mom also had, you know, as people do, like their own scent. And she had this specific perfume that, that went with that. So after they had both passed, sep- you know, obviously separately, but there, you know, I would be a very occasionally just what I would call visited by them. Like I would just, mm-hmm. I could smell them in the room with yeah. me. And it would only last 30 seconds or so. Not long. Our paternal grandmother, Maman, she visited Maman, me. did she? Mm-hmm. I smelled I her perfume. I don't recall her visiting me, but that's nice. Yeah. They so. show scent. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is one of the creepiest experiences of my life. <laughs> um, well, do you want to tell your story here before I get into the other Have part? Have you of heard my... this story? No. I walk into her room and... Because, like, I think she, like, rang her. She lived with us for a while but, um, before she passed. And she and, lived upstairs. Yeah, and so she had this bell that she would ring when she, when she, like, needed a drink or some food or anything like that. And so the bell rings. I go upstairs. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, what do you need? And, and she sees that I'm wearing socks. And um, and she, sp- she spoke French, too. Well, my mom, so, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, and she started, like, walking towards me, pointing at my feet, just going, Les chaussettes. They show set, and I'm like backing out of the room. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna go now. Bye. <laughs> I got, I got dad, and he just, I didn't, I didn't know deal why. with it. Uh, you, you had teenage brain. <laughs> What's wrong with my socks? It's like I'm in socks. Yes, I'm wearing, I'm wearing socks. Goodbye. Without <laughs> your shoes, how dare you, mon petit treasure. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so she visited you. Were you wearing socks? Uh, like, <laughs> if you remember uh, what is now Eli's room, like there used to be a little mini fridge in there mm-hmm. and we kept like stuff in there for her to drink and things like that. Right. And so in the middle of the night, I would just, it was in between her death and the funeral. I would smell her perfume oh. as, as if she was like getting a drink from the fridge and then it would just go away again. And it only lasted until the funeral, and then I never smelled it again. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so, then you have, are you talking yeah. your current story? So, yeah. So, now the more recent story that happened. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, our mom passed away earlier this month. and But mom never had a very distinctive scent. She didn't really no. wear perfume. And she just, and raised this way, too. He just doesn't have much of a yeah. scent. It, like, lucky you. Yes. Even when he works out, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's lucky for me, I guess, but whatever. There's no scent to me. Mm. So, um, uh, so I, but I was kind of thinking, I'm like, oh man, like how is, how am I going to know if mom visited me? And, but then uh, a few nights ago I was, it was late at night and I was just like turning off the lights and getting ready to lock in the doors, getting ready to head upstairs for bed and totally out of the blue. I, I wasn't like actively thinking about her or anything like that, but I could smell all around me gingerbread cake, which was my favorite dessert that she made for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and like this is the scent of molasses and spices. Like this is not strong smell. And it was yeah. strong and it felt like it's there that was a combination. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like it felt like the cake was like coming out of the yeah. oven right in front of my nose. Yeah. Like this was not, not a smell that you can be like, oh, I think that smells like right. you know, blah, this blah, is blah. not drifting on the wind yeah, somewhere. Yeah. And it's not like I have a molasses candle lit or something <laughs> like that. You know, this was very specific. Mm hmm. And that, to me, is why I think that it, it is an intentional notification of, hey, I'm here. I'm- Can I tell you my story now? Yes. It's just fresh from last night, and PJ <gasps> hasn't even heard it. Ooh. Which is also why I have to disagree with Kyle, because up until yesterday, I have been very jealous that everyone's like, well, I was visited by mom, and I was visited by mom, and I smelled ginger. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I sat and baked and decorated so many freaking cakes with this woman. Like, I deserve to be visited. I'm just saying. So now I just happen to be, like, walking out of the bathroom last night because I washed my face to get ready for bed. And I'm in the hallway going towards the bedroom. And I'm thinking about PJ downstairs because he's, like, you know, doing some stuff. And I just walk into this cloud. And it's not gingerbread. It's not cakes. It's not bread. It's not icing. It is a cloud of lily of the valley. 
What was her favorite? Oh, I hate it. And I was just like, <laughs> of all the things that you get, why don't I get the fresh baked bread? Why don't I get the ginger? No, I have to get Lily of the Valley. Um, but it was it was nice because like I knew it was her. You, you know. know, you immediately know. Because she always kept trying to give me, and PJ will test, like, give me like Lily of the Valley scented perfumes and mm-hmm. lotions and soaps. And she had the plants, you know, outside her house that she's given all of us starters from, you know, and I have them growing in my back lawn now. And so I'll always have those and I'll always smell them and think of her, which is wonderful. But I'm like, really? That? <laughs> and I, I knew that she was just doing it to be funny because I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go bake a cake for you now. So, yeah. So, mom visited me last Aww. night. I went in the bedroom and I cried. Yep. Tell which Dad. is why I did not tell PJ because I, I cried myself to sleep. Because I don't cry in front of people. As I told you, as I was crying over cake pants, <laughs> you need to leave because I have to cry and you cannot be here right now. <laughs> oh, I still yep. enjoy that story. Anyway, so... I'm sorry, Kyle, but I cannot agree with you on this. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think like of how I could agree. Like, I could see I it mean, as a residual a haunt. Residual like this haunt. person's yeah. memory. Yeah. Right. Residual haunt. This person's memory is imprinted on a like, space. Like you were talking so, about a cigar smoke. Yeah, and or you literally walk into their memory. Smell. And, and I yeah. can believe that both could happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think, believe that sense right. could be visited. Well, I also think that if like you smell something in a specific place at a specific time or something mm-hmm. like that yeah. that might be more in line with what Kyle's saying yeah well right and there was a time where Ray and I were visiting Gettysburg years ago and it was right at dusk and there was another couple I remember that they had, they had just we watched them leaving the wheat field and they drove off and so it was just Ray and I in the wheat field and this is where we have that one picture we really mm-hmm. do need to post um when we talk well, about that. Yeah, that's next yeah, week. Yeah. Um, but, well, maybe I should save this for next week and edit it in. Um, so, but we were in the wheat field totally by ourselves, and there was this overwhelming scent, and Ray didn't recognize it, but I did. Ray didn't recognize it because he's never shot a gun. Oh, but yeah, it was then. the gunpowder mm. smell, yeah. very powerful, and that's mm-hmm. that thick, almost tarry kind of oh, a yeah. scent. Yeah. And oily. it was yeah I, yeah I thought it was oily but well that would make sense to right her. Yeah. yeah and yeah and it lasted for a few minutes like it was very noticeable and well weren't you and anyway. I together we went on that one ghost tour and we were walking and we smelled that lavendery smell yes it hit us right in the face was as that we were in walking. Savannah or was that in, Ge- uh, in I think it was in Gettysburg yeah yeah I yeah, think you're right think evening. You're right. yes did we do an evening tour we did we did yes yeah, so yeah. yeah. it was I'm like smell it was the night one you're right and we had that mediocre guide. Yeah. He was, yeah. Well, what we liked, I think, about the Savannah ghost tour is that she was so matter of fact. Yeah. She was just like, yeah. these these people died here and this was hanging it's, and this is this. It's very and historical. Yes. And you can make your own assumptions. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. Gettysburg, a lot of the tour guides, like, they're, they're in costume. In, yeah, they're doing char- accents. They're doing a bit. They're it's... doing a bit. And it's just kind of like, you don't need that. No. The stories are enough. I, mean, I think it's such a serious area that you shouldn't really like do that kind of stuff. It and you'll see serious. him looking out the windows. Like, oh my God. Well, I think we yeah. just need to move yeah, to Gettysburg and start our own we'll ghost Laura tour. Do it. Okay, yeah. I'm in. I'm sold. <laughs> doing it. Maybe Amanda will invest in Just called Just Ghosts. <laughs> just Ghosts. Just Ghosts. <laughs> Period. <laughs> You may have heard us from Games Overboard and Well House Exorcism. <laughs> well right. House Ghost Tours. Well, ooh, I like it. Ooh. TM. TM. <laughs> C with a circle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Patent pending. Um, anyway, so our final discussion. So thank, thank you, Kyle. Made us talk and think about it and you, bring up our current uh, ideas mm-hmm. and what's going through our current lives. And we're going to move in. We actually are going to discuss sense because of Amanda's interview. So, PJ, you're talking about? The college. The Gettysburg, Gettysburg college. college. So go ahead and take it away. Jinx. Ah, dang it. That's right. I owe you a Coke now. That's right. So uh, the college, um, you'll hear a lot about some firsthand accounts of that in just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Uh, But um, it was founded in 1832, and it was just called Pennsylvania College back then. And now it is Penn Hall of the college, which is an administrative building for the most part. Uh, So this 
place is unique. It was one of the hospitals, one of the many hospitals that, you know, makeshift hospitals that, um, of the battle. But it was unique that it served both sides um, of the soldiers, which none of the others did. Uh, it started the first day, it was Union. Okay. And then they got pushed out, and then it was a Confederate-run place after that. Uh, but the students were still in it. <laughs> and, so, oh, wow. and so a lot of them had left to like be in the war and everything but some of them stayed and they became doctors oh no <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow uh one student henry watkins class of 1864 this is a quote from civil war ghosts so um he recorded that from anywhere inside gettysburg college and at any time the shrieks prayers and moans of the wounded or dying could be heard so, like, oh, anywhere wow. you are, they said every room and every hall was filled with approximately 700 oh, sure. Confederate soldiers. Probably packed in, like, sardines. I yeah. guess that makes sense, though, because in that time, it, you didn't really travel, like, 20 miles from your door. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Yeah, right. You just didn't. So, yeah. like, where are you going to go? You can't evacuate anywhere. You mm -hmm. didn't have, like... And you became a doctor because you were in college. Well, and because, Obviously like... Obviously, you're educated. Yeah, well, I mean, and you know what? We got a bunch of people with their guts hanging out, like... <laughs> You, you can either do nothing or you can try to help them. Yeah. I got a needle and thread, you know, yeah. like. I well, can there was a uh, one student he, um, where he said, you know, he's just being a good Samaritan. He's like, there's nothing else. Like, there was no option. Like, right. we, we treated them as best we could, even if they were Confederates, because that's what you do. Because they're people. See, that compassion and humanity that I love so yeah. much. That's yeah. what keeps the world turning. Yes. I think it's still mostly good people. Yes. So here's a gross story. Yes. Ooh, you. Ray. Ray, you ready? This, is, this one's gnarly right here. I will see what I can here. do to brace myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is from the National Museum of Civil War Medicine. Oh, I God. love going on there. I forgot the amputation information. Yep. They're, they're so, great. Are there words like gushy and oh, it's, loaded? It's Hus. something. It's something here. Yes. So. Okay. Among the Confederate wounded within Pennsylvania Hall was Colonel Waller Tazewell Patton of 7th Virginia. That's a great name. That's a name, yeah. The great uncle of famed World War II General George Patton, S. Yeah. Patton. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. So Colonel Patton was mortally wounded by an artillery shell during Pickett's charge, oh, blowing off his lower jaw. Oh. oh. I were reading about this. That's so, no good. Yes. No bueno. The mm -hmm. wounded colonel was like in modern medicine. I would not want that to happen no, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Two hundred so, years ago, so you're like I off really with the wounded colonel. So you're saying he initially survives? Uh, he was so mortally wounded. The wounded colonel was taken to Pennsylvania Hall, where attempts were made to treat his wounds. One of the nurses present, Euf Euphemia Goldsboro. These names. Oh my Euphemia. gosh. Called, now you need a daughter and you have to <laughs> yeah, name her Euphemia. No. <laughs> called Miss Effie by the soldiers oh, she treated. Goodness, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? That's much better. Uh, took special care of the colonel. Patton's wounds made it difficult to breathe due to fluid buildup, oh, yeah. oh. forcing him to lean against the wall to assist in his respiratory function. Miss Effie realized that treatment was not enough. She used her own body to keep him upright until a better solution could arise. Oh, just let me die. Oh, my God. That sounds awful. He died several weeks later. <gasps> Can you imagine living like that for weeks? The he, he must have starved He survived to until death. the 21st. He probably just starved slowly. Starved, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he could he probably drink water, water, but... Yeah. Oh, that's awful. Right. I hope they were giving him morphine like crazy. How do you, how, you can't even talk. No. So like, oh, uh, that poor man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. So he, he died in that... Uh, the, uh, at, at the Gettysburg college? college? Yeah, because um, they, uh, they kept about 290 some odd soldiers who were unfit to move. So they kept some there, like the ones who were too unstable to to move. Oh, but a lot of a lot of them like were evacuated out when the battle was over. That's but yeah. but that Confederates. Is disturbing. Yeah. Get off my lawn. So uh um I say that because this college is one of like one extremely active place and it has one of the most visceral stories okay. of the uh um, entire area of Gettysburg, at least in my opinion. Uh, so, and it's happened to on two different occasions, at least, that are documented. 
Ooh. So, uh, and it's a pretty famous story. You might have heard it. It's the reason why I wanted to do it. So, uh, this is from uh, the Gettysburgian. And the Gettysburgian is uh, the student newsletter of Gettysburg College. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so they did like a whole thing about the so ghosts and everything. So not Gettysburgonian, Gettysburgite, yeah. Gettysburgian. Be, okay. Yeah, the Gettysburgian. Now we know. From our interview, we know what to call them Bergian. now. Bergian. Bergian. Yeah. So um, it says here that uh, a man named John describes an encounter that took place when he was working as secretary in Penn Hall in 2003. So Penn Hall, you know, the main yep. college. Mm-hmm. uh he says, I took, quote, I took the elevator and when it opened, there was a full working Civil War hospital in the basement, like with like lights and people walking around working, uh, working soldiers. And I swear to God, I just looked at it like I was in a movie. I just stared. And then the elevator door shut. Like, so he was just transported back in back time. In time. When he took I that heard elevator, the story yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, it's Ooh. one of the most famous and like really visceral stories that they have. And but it happened a second time, right? So it did to different people. This it was a pair of um, oh, well, there's more John stuff here. Oh, okay, so uh, let's see here. So uh, John says, "Quote: I stood there for a minute, and I hit the open button, and when the doors opened, it was regular basement." Nobody ever heard of anything like that uh, or saw it, too. But I swear it happened. So there's that quote. And then there's another quote here from Mark Nesbitt's Ghost of Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, where he says, quote, two campus administrators in the 1980s took the elevator down to the basement of Pennsylvania Hall and unexpectedly saw bloody patients and doctors in the hospital there. End quote. Wasn't so, there a story, too, like, when they were standing there, or maybe it was to John, the nurses and doctors, like, turned and looked at him, and it felt, like, eerie because he was being watched. They realized he wasn't supposed to be there. Of all the quotes I could find, it was just that, like, I little blurb. I remember hearing that, though, because I yeah, feel like it was on there was Unsolved, like an Unsolved Mysteries. Mysteries. Yes. It, it's been imprinted into my yes, brain. <laughs> the visual. Every time I go into an elevator, I'm like, <laughs> where am I going to end up? I thought we were on Wellhouse Exorcism, not Liminal Unlimited right now. <laughs> That's what I was thinking it would be an awesome like, yeah. Yeah. Crossover. feature on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think it's interesting when I listen to all of Jen and Kyle's things, that space between, like, what is that space? Because I think that you are going back in time. And is that a, par- is it like a parallel universe? Are you stuck in that residual kind of thing? Because you see Jeremy getting hit by a carriage, right? Right. So I think there's a lot. We don't know. Yeah, I really think it's just the energy, happening. like a residual haunt. Like I'm, I'm not quite sold on the whole literally going back in time. I, I think it's just more, you know, like this memory. Mm-hmm. It's just imprinted that in the ground. Is there. Yeah, and, and, you, yeah, and you're just used. you just happen to find a time when it turned on and you watched it. You know, because it could be happening down there a whole bunch of times, but you're but not no one's there the to see it. Down, yeah. yeah. Oh no, thank you. And there has to be that kind of energy in there because if so a hospital haunt people... plays in the basement, and no one's there to see it. Does it really happen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Has it gotten colder? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. No, no, don't talk to him. Don't talk to them. But going on back to the limit along limited thing, just to kind of put in context with PJ, this whole discussion, there's a story about going back in time just in their, this week's episode. You have to listen. There's, it's so cool. So shout out to Liminal. But there's a story about this guy who he gets a phone call from his neighbors. And they're like, can you please come over and help me move this um, furniture to my this one room? And so he's like, yeah, sure. So he goes over. He, he helps um, his friend. And his friend has his priest friend there. So he meets this priest for the first time. So he's like, pull apart this bed. They take it upstairs to the room. Come back downstairs. And as he's going to leave, the friend says, well, hey, there's also an armoire. Can you help me bring that up? He's like, yeah, sure. Why not? So they're carrying the armoire up and he's at the bottom below. And then the priest friend and his friend are above and they're, they have the handle either breaks or they lose grip of it. And the armoire goes and squishes the guy and he dies. Oh, geez. but he wakes oh, up. Yikes. Yeah. He wakes up at his dining room table and he's like, what the heck just happened? And he wakes up there because his wife is saying, are you not going to answer the phone? And so he answers the phone and it's his friend calling again saying, hey, can you come help move the furniture? And he's <laughs> like, yes, but I'm not going to help you move the armoire. And his friend goes, you, how do you know about the armoire? 
And so he goes over and tells them the story. Then he's like, well, this is what happened. And the priest, of course, is very interested. He's like, well, how do we know you're telling the truth? He's like, well, I can explain to you what that upstairs room looks like down to a T. And he had never been in the upstairs room ever. So when he tells that story, his friend's just like, okay, no, this is legit. And so the priest, of course, had a lot of questions like, you know, what happened to you? He's like, no, I didn't. I mean, I know that I died, but I didn't feel anything. I just woke up at my table. So the question is like, are you, what are you, is it like precognizance? What, what is it? And so I find stories like from the Skettysburg yeah. College interesting because what are you seeing? Well, I mean, my own personal thought though is that time doesn't exist except here on earth. Yeah. So in theory, it's like everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. but kind of like it could be, you know, like mm-hmm. if, if you're like living in, you know, the the divine sense of the universe, in theory, there's no such thing as time. I'll tell you right now, do not move the armoire. You hear me? We have gone deep. We're, yes. we're down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so more stories. <laughs> Good transition, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so here's some stories from Stevens Hall uh, on oh, campus. Oh, and Amanda Ooh. mentioned Stevens Hall. Yes. Uh, one girl, Amanda Schlager. Different Amanda. Different Amanda, yeah. Yes. <laughs> says, during field hockey pre... But, listen to this. During field hockey preseason last year, I was the only one living in Stevens Hall. Lucky Amanda. <laughs> one night, I heard footsteps down the hall and above me. When I looked around the next day, there was no one else in the dorm. It's just like Amanda's story, <laughs> the footsteps, man. I would not like yeah. that, though, because mm. how unnerving is that to think there's someone here walking? Ah, oh, no, thank you. There's also a story of the blue boy. And oh, this actually became an urban legend. Yes. Uh, no one knows where the legend is, comes from, but legend is that there's this boy who's, like, freezing in the middle of the night, so the girls uh, snuck him into the dorm, and then he just, like, disappeared inside the dorm. Like, they, he, they lost him and never saw him again. But now they'll see, like, a little boy looking out, like, pressed against the glass, like, looking out. Oh, wow. Onto the campus or from inside the dorm. See, too. I would almost wonder though, like if it's more like a drummer boy, you know, that uh, then like this urban legend, like they created this yeah, other yeah, story. But yeah. like, like a drummer boy kind of makes more sense to me. Uh, mm. So then there's um, also uh, Huber Hall. Uh, one person says that uh, quote: "I was sound asleep one night in last year in H- Huber Hall. I woke up to my alarm clock going off, beeping twelve, even though I didn't set it. Mm-mm. When I pulled the cord out of the wall, the clock didn't turn off." <sighs> Run, girl! Smash it! <laughs> yeah, I've seen this in the movie. Was her bedroom 1408? I'm just asking. <laughs> Actually, there was a guy named Joe. Oh, so. Well, we've kind of lived it, though, Shanna. We had those speakers. Don't yeah. Forget. We had those unplugged speakers That's going. That's funny, White actually. <laughs> Another one. Uh, I woke up. This is Gabby Gill, a senior, also in Huber Hall. Uh, this was when she was a freshman. She said, Quote, I woke up one night to a pressure on my chest and I heard someone dragging across the floor. Mm-mm. I closed my eyes and when I opened them, every single item on me and my roommate's desk had been thrown onto the floor. They were prepping for an operating table. Yeah. Ooh, don't like <gasps> yeah. that. Don't like that at all. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Girl, you best run. Yeah, while you still have legs. Both, <laughs> both Gabby Gill and Joe lived... In the same room on the third floor. Mm. Oh. Interesting. Of mm. different years. You yeah. Know. Mm. Mm. It's like the Rachel room. I don't want to be there. I the mean... most terrifying ghost encounter that Joe experienced, however, was off campus. It was an off campus house overlooking the battlefield. And he said, quote, in the middle of the night, I felt something brushing against my feet incessantly. When I opened my eyes, I saw three black silhouettes shining lights on us. And when I opened my eyes, one of them was shining a light on me. And I sat up. When I sat up, all three left the room. In the morning, my friend said they felt arms around them, but they didn't open their eyes. Oh, my Ew. God. Gosh. I'm just trying to figure like that out. Like a lantern? Out. Yeah, Lanterns, like how do you yeah. shine a lantern on? Because like you hold it up when to... You hold it up. Yeah. 
But that's oh, how that, they. Yes, then they would have had to have come close to yeah. him then, if yeah. you think about it. And I think that like, explains But that's why how they, they had to do the like surgeries. The, yeah. They didn't have pen lights. They would hold lanterns over you as they sliced and diced, you know? And I don't know, someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't like lanterns like have like blocks so you could you could open up yes. some doors yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you could like so angle the light, the light you know so to speak mm -hmm. on that's actually written in telltale heartbreak ground i thought so mm -hmm. see see so yeah, at first when you're talking Mag about the, something brushing against the feet i thought we we're going with another poltergeist yes! <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh yay and then yeah, you I went like super like that. creepy no, no, creepy yeah Ooh. this oh. one by um uh, by a, a rule that I make for myself. Whenever someone says they recorded something, but they never show the recording, I don't believe them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, but here's one of sophomore football player Danny Thompson. He said, quote, my coach is... Oh, he said, like, he was... Um, he wasn't, like, playing all the... Okay, so he says it here, okay. So, quote, my coaches pulled me to their office and asked me how I was feeling in practice the day before. I told them I felt awful. My head was pounding, I couldn't see straight, and my legs hurt. What they said next is something I'll never forget. That's because you had a ghost inside of you, Danny. Say what? <laughs> so in practice uh, film from the pre preceding day, Thompson is seen running through the field, or with the football, when out of nowhere, a white, misty, circular image appears to fly out of his head and across the screen. Ooh. Oh my. Oh dear. And then he says, quote, if I hadn't seen the film, I wouldn't have believed it. But I did feel exceptionally weird that day during practice. And if I, if it wasn't a ghost, then I have no clue what it could have been. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising considering this school is built where so many people died in the Civil War. You know, and he, they never would have had the opportunity to play football. Baseball was only just becoming a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this could be like, you know, electricity like and running electricity, water. Yep. They wanted to give it a go. See, I, I went. <laughs> God, wear this thinking... meat puppet and try this out. <laughs> <laughs> but the way they did it, I thought like it's only like a cannon a hitting fit. him. And like, like I kind of saw oh, it as yeah. like almost like a cannon because if his legs are hurting, his head is pounding. Sounds like cannon fodder, you know. That's true. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I saw the residual pain of getting hit by a cannon. But who knows? Yeah. Had a yeah. ghost inside you. Ghost cannon. No, that counts. Thanks. There's only enough space for one soul in this meat <laughs> suit. I'm good. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Any more stories? No room at the end. Um, There were others from college students, but it's about, like, them leaving and going off campus and, like, their experiences at Devil's Den and things oh, like that. Okay. So. Yeah, going on yeah. those trips. But there, there are a lot of stories of just knocking you know, on their doors footsteps. and footsteps and, uh, you know, yeah. And just hearing like mutterings like and Amanda things stories. like that. Yeah. I didn't realize the blue boy came from Gettysburg. Cause when I was a kid, like there's like, I think a whole novel based on that, but like it, it's an urban legend on you. The blue boy is everywhere. But the idea is that he was like outside and, uh, uh there, the story that you hear is um, his mom was some kind of like a worker or something, but she couldn't have a child because then she would be fired. So she would hide her child outside her window every day because there's the like a precipice you could stand on. And so he would just stand out there during the day when she was working and she'd bring him back in in the evenings. But one day she left him out there and she didn't bring him back in in time and it was freezing cold. So he like literally died outside on this precipice. Oh, yeah. And so then the idea is that you see his face um, on the outside of the glass looking at his face is blue because he's frozen. So that's one of the urban legends that come from that. So it's just mm. interesting. I didn't realize that the origination actually is from Gettysburg. So that's just kind of cool. Yeah. Well, it's possible it didn't originate in Gettysburg, though, that maybe it originated somewhere else and was brought to Gettysburg yeah. to explain this blue possible. boy. You know, yeah. that's interesting. It's interesting. It is. It's fascinating. Further research is warranted. Yes. On this nonfiction subject. Absolutely. <laughs> this nonfiction subject. So do you have anything else to add? Uh, no. I As we were doing the interview, uh minor minor spoiler for the interview but uh i was trying to look up stuff on the chapel and there's nothing oh, so yeah there's a chapel on campus but i couldn't find anything about that chapel yeah amanda's stories were really cool and to go back to kyle's 
creepy thought, she actually smells the decaying matter smell. Yeah. I'd rather have the gun cigar smoke, smoke. the cigar yeah. smoke, the lavender Lily of the scent. Valley. Yeah, I'll take <laughs> any of those, Alex, for three hundred. Not what mm-hmm. um, she smelled. Yeah. So having her description, it's like, no, yeah, that's what it smelled like for months afterward at Gettysburg. What is nope? What is nope? <laughs> <laughs> What is your best run? Yeah. (laughs) I think you all will enjoy her stories because she lived, she went to Gettysburg College, and she has really interesting stories from the chapel. Yeah, they're they're crazy. You got to take some holy water and what you want to go there. (laughs) Just saying. And with the different halls she lived in, she mentioned Stevenson, so that's just kind Mm -hmm. of cool. Um, She didn't really talk about uh, Penn Hall too much because that's an administrative building, but she mentioned the cocktail party, which is where she smells the smell. She did see something outside of Penn Hall. Yes. Mm-hmm. And your stories of it being a hospital, I think, lend credence then to the smell she smells yeah. for a while yeah. because there have been a lot of stench around that area, especially mm-hmm. if a guy has lost mm-hmm. half of his jaw. Good Poor Lord. thing. She was being haunted by like a, not just a dead guy, but like a stinky dead guy. Yeah, like... we don't want any of that. <laughs> mm. Ugh. So, all right. Well, Thank you guys for such a wonderful week. Thank you for having us. Always yes, a good time. A good time. Next week well, will be episode four, which might be two episodes, because we're going to hit finally all the battlefields. We got Devil's Den and the Triangle. We got the Valley of Death. We got Iverson's Pits. We got Little Round Top. We got the Wheat Field. We got General Lee's headquarters. And we got Seminary Ridge. Well, the same, same thing. So we got all that going on. It's probably going to be a two-parter. All right. And then we'll finalize all of this with our last episode, the Daniel Lady Farm, the Spangler Farm, the Rose Farm, and Saks Covered Bridge. Because I figured we start in Gettysburg proper, and we just kind of spread our way out. We have the houses, yep. we have the hotel, the orphanage, now we're going out to the battlefields, and then we're going to go out to the farms, and we're done with I Gettysburg. Like cool. All right. So thank you, all of my listeners out there. If you would like to... Hop on Twitter and find me. The Wellhouse Exorcism finally has its own Twitter page. Um, so, you know, find us on Facebook under Games Overboard, of course, because I am a subsidiary of Games Overboard. But find me on Twitter and do the following while I send out my tweeters, my tweets. I'm going to use all those words because okay, I don't want to use the word Twitter the correct way. So get me on the Twitter you should be like, where are my tweets at? Where are my tweets at? Mm. <laughs> Chirp at me. Nope. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't like that. Don't like that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so it's at wellhouse underscore exorc. E-X-O-R-C. Exorc. Because you can't do more than like so many letters. Uh, so uh, at wellhouse underscore sense. exorc. E-X-O-R-C. I nice. see. I see. Yes. And our, RC. And our link RC. to our website, <laughs> gamesoverboard.com, is on Twitter. So you can see all the hard work that PJ puts into our website. I help sometimes, but it's mostly PJ. Excellent job, sir. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Have a lovely night. Thanks. <laughs> Was that intended for our listeners? <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> for, it was for PJ. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, PJ. I know, Good right? Luck. Good luck. <laughs> So, PJ, you're going to take us away, finish up this episode, paint us a picture with your words. What you have lost will not be returned to you. It'll always be lost. You're left with only your scars to mark the void. All you can choose to do is go on or not. But if you go on, it's knowing you carry your scars with you. Charles Frazier, Cold Mountain. Hello, everyone. Welcome for a special edition, an interview with an actual Gettysburg E. Gettysburgonian? Gettysburgite? Well, Ooh, yeah. What is alumna? the official term? I mean, well, alumna, no. it would be the official term. Gettysburgite. I like Burgite. That's probably Burgite. the best one. Burgite, yes. <laughs> so, welcome. Hi, I am Shanna. This is PJ. Hi. That's Laura. Hi. I'm Ray. That's, as you know. That's Ray. <laughs> Go ahead and talk for yourself. How dare you? Anyway, and this is the Wellhouse Exorcism. We focus on paranormal and focus on apparitions. We focus on is it actually haunted or is it not? So introduce yourself. Who are you? Apart from Laura's friend. 
apart from Laura and Ray's friends. Oh, and Ray. Uh, and, oh, and, yes. yeah, I know. I include Ray mm-hmm. when I can. Um, right. Yeah. We that. work in the same industry, in the same sector, so. In the same building? Yeah. No, just yeah. economic um, development. Oh, okay. It counts. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm Amanda. Um, I went to Gettysburg College for four years in the early 2000s, and I graduated in 2007. Nice. What'd you major cool. in? Uh, English. Excellent I was an English. Oh, yeah, Excellent yeah. So I was a fan. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I told some of you, like I, I would have probably changed the major, but I'd go back again in a heartbeat. It's one of the best schools. You just double major, and it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I just have no life. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an English teacher. I have no life. Yeah, see, I was going to do that. I was going to be an English teacher. And then I was like, I'm going to backhand somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a kid or an adult, but I'm going to backhand that somebody. That is not and you'll be in the local meant. news. Yeah. Good choice, Amanda. Exactly. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being on here. Now, you said that you went then to Gettysburg College. So mm-hmm. for you there for four years, a little bit longer, a little bit four longer. Four years, yeah. Okay. Did you live four on years. campus? I did. Uh, Gettysburg actually has some really awesome dorms and uh, you never really felt the need to live off campus because they were so nice. So it really kind of works out for you that you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I lived on campus all four years. So what building did you live in? So I lived in Patrick Hall, which is the freshman dorm, and then Paxton Hall, which is a converted uh, motel into dorms, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool. And then I lived in Apple Hall, and that's closer, like, on campus to things. And then I lived in um, Hazlitt, which is one of the uh, newer apartment buildings, like, near this, like, little pond. So this is very important. Were they all haunted? (laughs) (laughs) So out of all of them, Patrick was the most haunted, my freshman dorm. Interesting. Is it one of the oldest buildings? Not necessarily. I think it was actually built in like the 40s or 50s, I want to say. It's in the freshman quad. There's uh, Patrick, Paul. um, I'm trying to remember all of them right now off the top of my head. But uh, Patrick is like closest to the street. Uh, I think it's Washington Avenue um, that it's closest to. We were always told that the freshman dorms were built uh, over top of where the amputated limbs were. Nice. From the Civil War. Wonderful. Uh, so, Hear that, Ray? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, um, so Pennsylvania Hall is maybe about, I don't know, maybe about a five to six minute walk, if that, from the freshman dorms to Penn Hall. So, like, it's not that far. And that was the hospital at the time, like, on campus mm-hmm. during the Civil War. So it's, it's not inconceivable, I would think, to think that they would take – everything away from that and then just like bury dig, yeah. bury, yeah. bury. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's what we were told. I think I have never confirmed nor didn't like gotten denial on that one. Um, but that's what we were told. So we're just like, yeah, seems plausible. He has the research on that actually for our podcast I tonight. Do. But it was actually, awesome. they had to bury everybody like the day of because it stunk. <laughs> so it was super hot. And so they exhumed the bodies later to put them in the National Cemetery. But up until the yeah. 90s, they were still finding body parts that were buried. So <laughs> yum. Yeah. I, I can't imagine pulling the short straw on that one. So <laughs> I'm really happy somebody else did that. Uh, I'm sure the people that were reburied were also very appreciative Can um, get their feet back i don't <laughs> do you mark yeah your i don't like know if smile? they tried to reconnect <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bad puzzle game right yeah. would you want to do that mm-hmm. no thank you no are you no. sure okay can you imagine though being an administrator at gettysburg college and like you're putting in a new building and they're gonna break <laughs> ground and you're just crossing your fingers like not Please. to find anything <laughs> no bodies no yeah. bodies yeah <laughs> No, we're well, and about I mean, the photo op. <laughs> they have put in new buildings, but really it's been more like uh, not close to where Penn Hall was and the battlefields. It's more like on different parts of campus. Like they've had buildings and then like redone them or something. So they haven't necessarily had to dig deep, but. Because yeah, there are stories yeah. of people who were like crawling away and they found them dead like months and like even years later out in the woods and against <laughs> wood stacks. So. It's not implausible that you would find like a dead body underneath anything you're digging in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and right? they're still finding you're, things. You're like they're, yeah, they're still finding uh, belt buckles and ammunition and 
cases and things like that. I mean, glasses, things like you would think that are long gone or, or broken or destroyed. I mm-hmm. mean, they're still finding them. It's kind of crazy. They just don't make stuff the way they used to. <laughs> no, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> True. Okay. I look at some of the old vacuum stuff. I'm like, I wish I had that one because mine's died mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. for two years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I just want to hear your stories. Yeah, that My interview was just, <laughs> I want to hear all your scary stories. <laughs> I've got I've got a few kind of crazy ones. So I guess I'll start with my freshman dorm because that's where we were just talking about. But um, so I lived on the fourth floor and that's the top floor. There's literally nothing above you. It's just an attic. Like uh, I think maintenance could access it, but nothing else. Uh, you can't like there's not like a little ladder that you can go up and like mm-hmm. crawl around. I think like usually the scariest thing you might hear is like a bird or a squirrel or something. <laughs> but um, I remember it was I want to say like kind of mid to late first semester but um i had was like working at my laptop um like at my desk and my roommate was out because she played basketball so she was at practice or something and i want to say it was around like eight nine o'clock and like it was kind of quiet for what it was just because like there were a lot of uh people on my floor that just had different clubs and different meetings and I, I mean it's freshman year like everybody's over involved in everything yep. including sports yeah. and whatever else overextending um, and tired exactly exactly and missing home and whatever else so I'm just like working away I, I'm I think I was like writing a paper or something and all of a sudden like I just hear heavy boot footsteps above me and I'm like the hell is that like, <laughs> those darn squirrels and, well, exactly. And I'm just like, so that is the largest mother bleep squirrel I've ever heard. <laughs> or like, this is something weird. So, and and it went on for about a solid two minutes. Like it was, it, well, it felt like much longer than that, yeah. but it was just super heavy, slow footsteps. And it sounded like boots, like just heavy heel toe, heel toe, Mm -hmm. back and forth along the ceiling. And I like went out in the hallway, no one there. I went into the stairway because so my room was like, uh, it was like my room, the boys bathroom, we had co-ed dorms. um, And then uh, it was the boys bathroom next to mine. And then it was my RA Al. And then it was the stairwell. There was no one in the stairwell. Like there was no one around like it was just me in my room and i think like uh my friend alex was across the hall with uh her roommate and i'm kind of like so i'm the only one hearing this and like clearly i it's not like i felt like other than like weirded out i was like okay i guess you're just checking things out or whatever like i'm doing my work i swear but like it was just it was just really strange and then i the rest of the year i never heard it ever again it was that one time. Um, Did anybody else other, say they heard it too? No, no one else said that they heard okay. it. Hmm. So it was just me. I guess I was the lucky one. I have no idea. Um, I kind of wish somebody else like heard it at a different time just so I didn't feel so crazy. But like, can't forget that one. Um, now, do you know if that building so- is as old as the Gettys, like the actual battles? Because they did use attics for sharpshooting. Oh, yeah. Uh, this building, I think, was built in the 40s or 50s, okay. like I mm-hmm. said. Um not sure but yeah like some of the older buildings like stevens hall i never lived in stevens but that's probably it was patrick there's i think it's patrick then there's another building right next to it that's like parallel and then stevens is like the next building like within like say maybe 75 yards it's not that far away like the campus is really small if you've ever been there like it's totally walkable within all of like 15 minutes oh wow 20 minutes Hmm. yeah so stevens is very very close um but that was one of the weirder things that happened in patrick i I mean we had friends who like always had remotes go missing their tvs would flip on like weird stuff like that um like electrical things i know sometimes like our lights would flicker but it was it was just little stuff like it was never anything that felt threatening in some way like i never felt like i had to move out of my dorm like it was never anything like that they were just saying hello or as ray said imagine someone in that time period and they're like "Ooh, what's this electricity i click, click. would be in my element can you imagine <laughs> like being from like the 1860s and then being like seeing 21st century technology I'd be so happy I, plumbing yeah yes. turning the water on and oh, i would oh, be crossing oh, remotes yeah. just for fun well i mean what else would i be doing <laughs> I mean, <laughs> 
I'm too tired anybody. to haunt anybody, so I'm just gonna play with this light switch. I know. <laughs> I'm just imagining a ghost like sticking a fork in a light socket, being like, "What is this?" There? Like, oh. like, bring out a light yeah. picture. Don't do that. Like, oh, okay, yeah. got it. So that's what it does. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think we could be ghosts in the, in the, we can't do that no. <laughs> we'd be the horror no, no, they guys. Would have, yeah they would sage the building just because like, we would annoy them so annoying. much yeah. Just like, yeah we really wouldn't make it I don't think in the long run no. so what else happened uh, so also freshman year, um, I was in uh, the cool kid thing to do, marching band. So uh, yeah. that's well, I, I was in cons because I wasn't going to get sweaty. So <laughs> yeah, so they had the same thing that like high school did, where you had to do marching band in in order to do orchestra at the time. And I wanted to be an orchestra, so I had to put, like take one for the literal team and be in marching band. So. Uh, we got like as a freshman, you got it, and as a band like person, you got to come onto campus a few days early, which I kind of like because I felt like I got acclimated a little easier to, to, you know, college living, if you will. Uh, still scared to death, but <laughs> got there a little early. Um, but we, uh, they like planned all these like different events, and one was a scavenger hunt, and so they paired us off into like like two different or three different teams. And I got paired with my newest friend, Nick, at the time, and he was from New York, I think. And uh, we had to go to the chapel, which is, again, like maybe halfway down the block from where my dorm was. Like, it's very, very close. Like, chapel's here. My dorm's, like, over here. Like, it's really close by. Um so we had to go in there and there's this mural that's behind the altar and we needed when do you remember when uh digital uh cameras were a thing <laughs> yeah. yeah digital cameras <clears throat> so we had to take a digital camera and get a picture of the mural that's behind there so we were looking for like all these different like gettysburg college like momentous or things or you know icons or whatever so we go inside the chapel and like it's creepy. I'm not gonna lie. This like this place like at night the doors are open. It gives you a creep factor. Like and I don't know if it's normally like that. The last time I was there was like baccalaureate. Like I was like I'm not going back here after this experience. <laughs> so um, so we are like and we're brand new. We are barely freshmen at this point because we've been there all of 24 hours. So. We're like walking in and like, I'm Catholic, he's Catholic. And we're just like, okay, like sign of the cross. Like we're going in. <laughs> Protect me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're just kind of like, okay, we're going to get this and we're going to get out. And so then um, we're like halfway down like the main like aisle. It's a single aisle. And then there's like pews on either side. And then there's the two like side aisles. So we're like halfway down the center aisle. And all of a sudden, like we hear organ music. And I'm like, Okay. This is weird and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and we're like all right what the hell is going on so there are two organs in the chapel there's one at the front and one in the choir loft now the one in the front is like the antique it's never used and that's the one that was playing so I'm of like, course, okay. yeah. as in like okay. the keys were like coming down and stuff like that or so we did not get that close to figure okay. that out. <laughs> I was going <laughs> And frankly, why not? not going to. Yeah. <laughs> was not going to get that close to figure that out, right? Like maybe you would. No, not as like <laughs> no, I was not going to do that. Um so him and I are like, "All right, it, can you handle organ music?" Like we had this like pep talk of like we just need this freaking photo. Like we just want to get in and get out and so we're like all right so we are looking for this mural like we still hear the music we we get like maybe three quarters up like the rest of the aisle and then we hear giggling from like a little girl and little footsteps running in the choir loft oh my gosh it they um, ran the kids are now, scary anyway i have three. oh no not at all not at all like kids don't already freak me out yeah. like, like, they're solidified that i was not having children I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh the um so we heard that now i need you to keep in mind this is at like 10 30 at night there are no cars on the street like there Where are, are her parents <laughs> 
yeah, this is a where are your children moment on TV. <laughs> but there's no one around. There aren't any cars. Like there's no kids outside. Like the campus is barely active because no one is on campus yet. Like it's before school even starts. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. fresh yeah, it's yeah, it's a ghost town. <laughs> yeah, like literal oh. ghost town. Like no one's around. <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> I live yeah, here. So at that point, with the little girl giggling and the running, uh, we just like kind of froze, and then we heard the giggling again and the running back the other direction across the choir loft. And him and I just looked at each other and we're like, "Nope, nope, <laughs> nope." Don't not doing it. So you, not doing it. you never got the photo. Never got the photo. We got out of there. <laughs> I was like, "Forget it." See, me as the teacher slash also mom, I'd be like, stop running around. You're going to hurt yourself and stop touching the piano. How many times have I told you not touch the organ when we're talking, in church? Wait, you're talking about like I the pitter patter? Like, yeah. oh. I'd be like, stop running up See, there. Oh, I thought you were talking about like Amanda and her friend because my parents would have been like, what the <laughs> hell were you off. doing there at 1030 at night in the first place? No, no. I think I'd be like, like knock it off. I need to get a picture. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be yeah, scared too. So. I like to pretend that I would like yell at it. All right, yeah, so anyway. it, was, it was just really freaky. Honestly, it was just very freaky. It was just one of those things where like you just you didn't know what to do. Like, and again, it it didn't necessarily feel threatening, but like it also was just really strange. Yeah. And you're like, you can't explain this. Like, a, like what sounded like a four or five year old like giggling. At ten thirty, quarter of eleven at oh, night, yeah, no. like does not make sense whatsoever. You're in danger going wow. your best run. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Kids are, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So okay, so did you didn't get the picture? Did you explain to your teacher that you could not get the picture because of a haunting? And what yeah, did the teacher so, say? <laughs> so uh luckily like our uh like instructor, like professor, like really didn't care about any of this. So, oh, okay. um, <laughs> so uh, we had to like report back to like our group. We we're like, you can go back and get the photo. Not, <laughs> not it. Not it. I, we, Nick and I were just like, absolutely not. Like, not going to happen. Just not going to happen. Do you still so talk to Nick? Really no, I don't. No, he moved. I think he's in he's in like biomedical research or something now. He's like got a doctorate and doing some kind of crazy research or something. Ray has a doctorate. I Doctor Hayden. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Hayden. <laughs> Shout out to Ray. Yes, throw that and in. And almost Doctor Hayden here as I well. I like to call it Professor Hayden for now. <laughs> oh fine. She's in, en route. <laughs> In ethical leadership, not in ghosts. Oh. <laughs> and oh, not I mean. not in that mathy stuff you do over there. <laughs> 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 All right. So we have creepy footsteps, which I think could be like a, a soldier, obviously. That makes a lot of sense in the, the boots, attic area. Yeah. Yeah. Although, if funnily, they were short, short running footsteps, though, yeah, you can tell. Oh, I meant, oh, I meant oh, in the, uh, the first story. Oh, yeah, the I meant the first story. Yes. Yeah. We got a little kid running around, which makes sense for a chapel because little kids are stupid. Yep. Shout out to my children. Anyway, <laughs> what were you going to say, funnily enough, Ray? Oh, I was just thinking, like, footsteps seem to be a recurring theme, at least with these two stories. Yeah, they are. Yep. True, true. So what mm-hmm. else happened? Did you see so that, anything? See things? Um, well, like I said, like, lots of lights flickering and stuff like that. That was always, like, one of the larger mm-hmm. complaints of things. Um, I remember being in uh, Gladfelter, which is, like, the Harry Potter building. I oh, love it. Like, okay. the very, like, super gothic. Like, you can't miss it on campus. It's one awesome. of the most, like, beautiful, like buildings on campus and it was built in i think 1880 okay uh i'm pretty sure after the war yeah but uh i remember i had a uh like an anthropology class or something and i had to meet with a group and um i was walking out and i had to go in the opposite direction of everybody else which is fine like again it, it campus never really feels unsafe because like it's very well lit like it's mm-hmm. not really a big deal but i remember like where gladfelter is pennsylvania hall is like literally directly in front of you if you're going from on the entrance of gladfelter so i remember walking past penn hall and like you just see i just like saw something in the corner of my eye and it looked like somebody standing in the window mm-hmm. and i couldn't really tell 
what it looked like, but it just like, I did like a, like a double take and it was like, they're a second, they're not. But to me, it kind of looked like a woman okay. and it looked like she was older. And I think she had her hair up, but again, like, that could it have been something? Second look. Yep. Yeah. It's a split sense, it's something, but like, I got the feeling that like, you know, when you're walking past a window or something and you feel like somebody's looking at yeah. you, you kind of look and I looked over and I'm like, wait, what? And then all of a sudden not there. Well, that's not to be said and for so, like your gut instinct. Like, you know that you're being watched, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It probably could have been a nurse too. Cause that's where we had a lot of surgeries happening. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she was holding any feet or <laughs> just, arms. She's got the basket, basket full. Of arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's knows? got a pocket, got a pocket full of hands she's looking for someone to give her a hand with her basket mm-hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no more of that no more okay. <laughs> no we had we had our fill of those jokes last week had to go <laughs> out on a limb for that one <laughs> <laughs> not related at all <laughs> i guess you couldn't say she was a handy man because she was a handy woman <laughs> you're it's welcome like, it's like you it's like you have a leg up on this conversation <laughs> <Shanna>. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so, moving on. Well, I was only asking if you'd seen something because you know you have these stories of people who are seeing a Jeremy running out in the street and getting you know hit by the carriage over and over again. Which a different story from near the Farnsworth, right? Right, Farnsworth. And then you have stories up at Tilly Pierce um, Inn where you have people who are seeing like the actual like soldiers marching still. So I was wondering if you had seen anything because it seems to be a pretty common um, kind of experience. You know, it's, I've had friends who have had like those weird, like, you think you hear something like I know my friend Christine, um, she was at, uh, she was actually on the battlefields. And she was just walking around taking photos. And she actually smelled pipe tobacco smoke, Mm -hmm. which is always interesting. Like every so often this weird whim um like whiff of that um so my actual reunion was last june which was kind of scary to in itself to go back after like 50 <laughs> years um and uh i actually stayed at the farnsworth house uh because it was on kind of the bucket list and i you know waited to the last minute to book my hotel room as reunion people do so <laughs> i got a short straw to the farnsworth and um uh, it was really strange because like I was getting ready in my room, like I was heading towards dinner and we were having this like uh, cocktail party in front of Penn Hall, which was pretty cool. Uh, and I'm hoping the ghosts really enjoyed themselves and joined us. Yes. For this mm-hmm. So yeah, they deserve to have a cocktail too, I think. <laughs> but uh, as I was getting ready, um, I kept smelling something like foul. Like mm. it was awful. Like, I mean, I was I was checking the bottom of my shoes. I'm like <laughs> looking in my bags. I'm like, did I step in something? I'm like, I showered. Like, what's going on here? Swear to God, I can still not figure out. And it happened two other times when I was there. And I still cannot figure out what this smell was. And like, it was this like decaying smell. It was terrible. Wow. Oh, I remember wow. being on the phone with my husband uh, and he's about to come in by the way. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, I, I was just like, I literally have no clue what this smell is. And I'm like super annoyed because I'm like, I'm not going to my reunion smelling. Like, like I'm not doing <laughs> it. I'm not my is it me? <laughs> well, you yeah, probably smell the decaying matter of the people who had passed away during the battle because the stench was there for, you know, months after because they were still you know, burning all the horses and the mules and the donkeys. Oh, yeah. And Farnsworth <laughs> was definitely used as a hospital. Yep. So. Mm. Yeah. And you, yeah. Even in front of Pence Hall, of course, they were oh, using yeah. that, too. Yeah, the college was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the whole town. <laughs> yeah. Really. There, there are dead bodies everywhere. Yeah. 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 But they said the smell permeated all of Gettysburg for months afterward. Mm-hmm. And so women were covering their faces with mint and with lavender. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. Can't blame them. It was, yeah. If that's what I smelled, mm-hmm. it was gross. I would not highly recommend that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zero out of five stars for this review. I yeah, know about it. seriously. <laughs> um, a great location, great accommodation. Yeah. Staff was lovely. Food was good. Like the cocktails were good. Yeah. The cocktails, cocktails were great. Yeah. Beer garden, highly yeah. recommend. But cool. yeah, it was. Please put out a sensi. And to your point, Amanda, <laughs> like hopefully they were there because honestly, what are cocktails without spirits? Oh. 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 And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot get a better joke than that. Thank you, Ray. That was a good one. Since yep. it's the well yep. exorcism, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. It's better than PJ's exactly, tabby yeah. joke last week. Yep. 
Tabitha. And Me- Meow Tilda was great, though. Yeah, that yeah, was, was pretty I still good. hold on. Still a ghost yeah. cat. We have our share of <laughs> cat mm-hmm. on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, uh, it's only because PJ's here and he's, you know, a dad, so he has the dad right. jokes. It's, That's right. I live with it 24-7. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm-hmm. I'm in the glass case of emotions. Somebody help me. Anyway, so what else happens? Any more stories? So- I'm I'm trying to think if there's those are like kind of the big ones. Um, mm-hmm. I think some of the freakiest moments were like more human related because like you'd be like walking back from the library and you'd see some woman dressed up in period attire with a lantern, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you'd see all the little you, you know like regular human ducklings like just trailing behind. <laughs> so like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, for a split second, when you see a woman with a lantern just tr- like walking along like one of the sidewalks, it freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, I <laughs> believe it. it. Yeah. And then she turns around and it's like, don't laugh. It's paying for the summer house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just love history. I'm doing this for free. Yes. Oh, that's Laura. There she is. Found yeah. her. Yes. Besides, she's our exactly. resident raised man. Yeah. Rain man I mean. Don't laugh. I-, I majored in art history and I have student loans. <laughs> so don't major. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so do you hear any yeah. other earth stories from people like even professors did they have anything to add you know professors never really like to talk about it that was kind of the weird thing i kind mm-hmm. of expected i expected one to go there like that there would probably be like a more openness about it but like people really didn't talk about it like yeah you would talk about it with your friends and be like oh did you hear blah 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 like that happened or something and like Like, again, it was always weird stuff. Your stereo would turn on and off. Your TV would flip on and off. The channels would randomly change. Lights would flicker. Um, That happened to me in the Farnsworth house, too. I was downstairs, like, checking out about 10 a.m. And, like, the lights just kept flickering. And I'm like, seriously? Like, no, I'm leaving. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah, like, I'm I'm leaving. I'll give you a good Yelp review. Like, I'm sorry (laughs) that I didn't, like, write anything the little books or something. But, um, yeah, it was just – it was always, like, something – Like, it's just like they almost want to be acknowledged more than anything else. Like, nothing to me ever felt like I was in danger, soul was in danger kind of thing. Like, it was like... That's a common thing we've seen is there's really no malicious feel from any of these ghosts. It's just... Maybe if the poltergeist cat, but it just knocks your drinks off. It's just an angry cat. You know, that happens. It's just like it's residual, really, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I do think there might be some like kind of curiosity if they are kind of stuck in things or if they are a little bit more co- conscious of like what actually is happening in the modern world and like the now times. Like, I I mean I can't say that I wouldn't be curious too about what's going on, but I mean I would also imagine from what I've read that it takes energy to like make something happen. Yeah, and so I. I mean, there is a lot of electricity now. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like to quote Ray from a previous podcast episode. He's like, dude, if I died in the early 90s, I would wreak havoc on the Wi-Fi. I <laughs> really <laughs> would. I was like, yep, that's true. Me too. Mm-hmm. Get past all that terrible like, yes. you know, dial-up crap and all the mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. Thank you. You would not recognize your Spotify list. <laughs> <laughs> This song there. Ray. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we really appreciate you coming on here. We're going to use some of your stories actually in the podcast proper because okay. right after we finish with you, we're going to record our mini series part three, which is the Gettysburg Hotel and the Gettysburg College, College. and the Gettysburg Orphanage. Yep. So we're going to have a, a lot of stuff to talk about, but we're going to bring in some of your stories for the modern context. So we oh, really awesome. appreciate oh. it. Are happy you... to help. I'm. I'm. I, I mean, if you ever want to go down and visit, I'm happy to be a tour guide. Ooh. I love. I, I mean, That'd be awesome. I like to put them together, put them against each other, and see what happens. Fight to the death, mm-hmm. Laura and Amanda. Why? <laughs> oh, Laura Whoa. knows Our own everything. Civil war. Oh no, Amanda. I'm sure knows more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, well, yeah, but you know, Amanda knows the college. That's I don't know college. That that's, she knows you know. everything else. So we put we put you both in period attire. You give <gasps> both lanterns, and you can do a duo. I know, this and freak all the undergrads out. <laughs> <laughs> we can go get our picture taken at the old timey photo place. Yeah. yeah, and maybe we can finally get that picture in, with the mural for you and the chapel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they haven't started locking up the chapel. Um, It is a beautiful chapel. Like, I mean, if you go and you go into any of the buildings or anything, like, the the campus itself is gorgeous. Like, I mean, again, like, you step out, like, spring and it's cherry blossom season. Like, you get out of that car and you're like, yep, I'm going here. Take my money. Doesn't matter. Like, I don't care what courses you've got. I'm going here. Like, that's (laughs) (laughs) not courses. They're just ghosts. It's fine. And a and they have the smell. Civil War Institute. Yeah, they have the Civil War Institute, which is pretty cool. Um, 
yeah, it's just really fun. We did do a ghost tour, uh, like one of the official ghost tours, whatever, uh, with like all the equipment and stuff. And that was pretty cool. Did you see anything? Get any good uh, so spirit? We talk? didn't see anything. We did get a couple of like uh, EVPs though, uh, where we were on one of the newer bridges. Uh, I guess it's off of the battlefields. Um, so not near the college or anything, but uh, off of the battlefields. And they, uh, I forget what my, my husband asked a really stupid question. And it basically said like, no, go away. And then <laughs> like, Sorry. Oh, yeah. God. My gosh. <laughs> so then Continue. The, the guy who took us out was just like, so we're just going to end this here now. We do. We don't usually like them to be this verbal or like, you know, like, <laughs> hostile and like their response he so doesn't like us <laughs> like ooh. yeah getting but i have welcome to, vibes <laughs> yeah but we've we've always joked about like getting our own equipment and like going out and like trying it trying stuff again just to like see so maybe we can do like a field trip, ooh. Field trip. Oh, good. Yes, i like it yes definitely oh, sounds like fun sounds oh. like a good way to spend like some days in october Oh. Well, or I mean, July. Let's not forget. We oh can yeah, do of it. course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Silly but me. Night, what was I thinking? It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot in July. I know. That is true. I don't want to yeah. be hot. <laughs> Anywho, so thank yeah. you so much for being on here. We really appreciate it. And my question before we go is: Are you on Twitter or Facebook? I am on Facebook, but I'm not on Twitter. Okay, I will tag you on Facebook with this because. Surprise, today I created my own Twitter handle for the Wellhouse Exorcism oh. proper, not Games Overboard. And so I'm going to link you on Twitter as well. Yes, awesome. I made the tweeters and I'm going to do the tweetings. Oh boy, Twitter, really? Of all I of them? I did. Twitter? Only so I could, you know, comment over on Liminal Unlimited podcast. Mm. But I made the tweeters. Like tweeters. So, the tweeters. So, actually, my first uh, official like tweet was to Liminal Unlimited podcast. I mean, kind of when you think about it, Twitter's sort of like a disembodied voice, Ooh. Um, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my cover photo, actually, like the the the, the cover mm -hmm. photo versus like, your profile picture, is the on air picture I took up, up there. I love yes. it. And all, it's all creepy and dark. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Anyway, so awesome. I'll put I'll link you on both. We really appreciate it. if you want to ever come over here and hang out and tell some stories or listen to stories you're Absolutely. always welcome if yeah. i think of any more i will keep you posted but those are like the big ones i always think about so no awesome. you just gotta come to our house and be in our creepy basement this is, our oh. creepy, this is it no it's very nice now now, now it, is. it was not that, <laughs> add that <laughs> <ad -herb>. now, <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank so you, much of course. Have, have a great night all right thank good you. night